Hey there, friends. Welcome to another episode of The Art of the Interview. Thanks for tuning in today. Today's episode is titled How to Step into Empathy When You Feel Only Antipathy. Um, I'm actually really excited for this episode because I actually think this episode in particular has a lot of power to do a lot of good in the world, not just in the uh, sector of official interviewing, but also in just normal human relationships um, with family and friends and uh, people who are outside of your camp, whatever your camp might be. This episode, I think, is something that has a lot, this episode has some techniques and some skills that I've learned over a lot of years, um, not just as an interviewer, but just also as a human being, um, to be able to really step out of situations where you're feeling really um, hostile toward another person um, and to be able to step into a different place, a different state where you can actually have a more generative conversation with that person. Um, and like I said, I think that if, if, if I do a lot of these episodes on just interviewing, but this one in particular, I think has a lot of application outside of just the interviewing sector. Yes, these techniques can be used when you're doing an official interview with someone, but they can also be used with someone spouses, friends, family, all the people who I was listening earlier. And I think it has a lot of power to really help you to help us as humans to have more generative conversations, even with people who we disagree with or feel downright angry, hostile, hateful, whatever that is, right? And I fully include myself in that category of someone who experiences that toward other people. Uh, and over the years, I've learned some techniques through a lot of different experimentation to be able to sort of take myself in from that place and not necessarily change my emotions, but to get a more generative conversation out of that experience. And I'm going to talk about some of those skills here today. And I'm also going to give some examples of where I have used them and how I've used them. So that's what we're going to cover in today's episode. I'm really excited about it. Um, and I really hope that you can take this and use it both in your professional interviewing career, if you're an interviewer, but also in your um, interpersonal life with people who you just come across with or, you know, in person or online. All right. So, um, those, let's just jump in right into the steps that I have uh, that I that I've understood. So let's before before we jump into the steps, let's let's set the scene, right? So you're in a conversation with someone. Let's say it's your that in law who you just cannot stand, right? That maybe they are a Trump supporter and you're a Biden supporter, or maybe they're a Biden supporter and you're a Trump supporter right? Maybe they are someone who just has really crazy religious beliefs. They're totally off the other aspect, end of the spectrum, and you just cannot stand it when they talk um, about whatever that thing is. And so you've really ultimately just decided to just avoid that conversation, right? And yet at, so, at certain situations, right, you just can't get away from it because you're at a family gathering and they're just talking about it, right? So that's the situation. And you're just feeling yourself getting angry. You're feeling yourself getting frustrated and feeling like, how can this person believe these things? How can they think these things? How can they experience these things, right? Like, seriously, how can they? Like, how could any sane human being think this thing that they're saying? I don't understand. I don't get it. Like, maybe they're just, I don't know, fundamentally broken or something like that, right? So, but I don't know how to have this conversation with them because maybe they're so um, overtly, you know, just hostile about the thing and they're just big and they don't listen, right? So let's take that. So that's one situation, right? And you're just feeling frustrated, you're angry, and you just don't want to have the conversation. And yet you, some part of you does. They, You want to know, like you want to t change this person's mind. You want to understand them. And you want to like maybe like, you know, help them shift out of these really harmful mindsets that they have, right? This is something that, you know, like we all experience. Like on the one hand, like we see, we, we, we interact with people and we're like, wow, like I really like, I want to change this person's mind, but you know, maybe that's just not going to happen the way that I'm feeling angry and frustrated, right? 
So that's one situation, right? So let me set another situation where maybe this is an experience that you're having. You're in a conversation with your spouse, your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, you know, whatever, your father, right? Someone. And all of a sudden the conversation goes off the rail. You are now talking about that subject that you just do not either want to talk about or like talking about, but for whatever reason, you have found yourself having that conversation and you're frustrated. They're frustrated. Both of you are trying desperately to be seen and heard by this person who you really value, right? This isn't that weird in-law who you can just be just fine with putting, uh, you know, not talking with um, at the family gatherings, going in the other room and hiding when they come in the room, going to the other, you know, the other island, uh, going to flying, literally flying to an isle, another island where you live to avoid that person. I have a friend who, <laughs> who does that, and you know, not for necessarily bad reason, right? Like this person is very, you know, but this person that you're having that conversation with is not that person. This is your spouse. This is your wife. This is your husband. This is your boyfriend, and you deeply want to connect with them. You want to see them. You want them to see you because you want to have intimacy with the intimacy with them. But in this particular conversation, right, it's just not happening, and and yet you're still feeling angry, you're still feeling frustrated, and you desperately want to be seen because you want to be seen and because deep down you want to connect with this person. We all have that experience. I have it with my wife, right? Where I am feeling so frustrated because I really want to be seen in this, right? I'm a human being too. And I want to be seen for what I think, what I believe and to be, because I know deep down somewhere that I have value to what I have to say, right? And that's just not happening. What do you do in these situations? right? So I'm going to give you five steps of things, ways that you can shift the conversation from antipathy to empathy. So let's jump into those five steps. The first step that I've found is very helpful is notice. Really what this boils down to is this is happening. So often when we get angry, when we get frustrated, when we get annoyed, we fail to be able to notice that it's happening. We are so in the experience that we're having, the anger, the shame, the just frustration, the desperation to be seen and understood, we have very little ability to step back and notice what's happening objectively. And this is really the first step in these situations to being able to shift it into a place of having a more generative conversation. And what that looks like is simply taking a step back from that emotion. Maybe not, you know, not having it, right? Not repressing it, but objectively looking at it. Wow, I am really angry in this situation. Wow, I'm really bitter in this situation. Wow, I'm feeling really defensive in this conversation, right? I wonder why that is. This is not a Con condemnatory or condescending or judgmental noticing. Wow, why am I so angry? Why are you being so angry, Will? That's so shallow. That's so, you know, I don't even know what the right word would be. It, it's so basic. It's so just unenlightened, right? That's not what this is. This is an objective observation of the experience that you're having. I am feeling angry. I'm feeling bitter. I am reacting very defensively. That's the first step because what that does is it objectifies the experience rather than inhabiting it. And when you can objectify something, when you can look at it from a third party perspective, you can change it. When you're in it, you can't change it. You can't change an emotion from inside the emotion necessarily. You have to take a step back from it. You have to look at it and say, oh, this is happening. And then you can take it to take the next step, which is moving you toward a more gener generative conversation, which is number two, which is to accept it. This is normal. This goes hand in hand with noticing. Um, but again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to step out of judgment and step into curiosity, objectivity, 
You're trying to say, hey, this is normal that I'm having this reaction. It's normal that I would feel defensive in this situation. It's normal that I would feel angry in this situation. It's normal and acceptable that maybe I would feel a little bitter. For whatever reason, I'm having this experience, right? This is in direct contrast to essentially being like, I shouldn't be feeling this. I shouldn't be experiencing this, right? You are accepting it. You're normalizing it and you're saying, this is happening, this is normal. Because now what you have is you have your emotions, you have your experience as an objective thing that you can hold in your hand, you can look at, and you can decide what you want to do with it. This is the first step to being able to step from antipathy into empathy. Now, step number three, so you have notice, accept, three, which is realize. Step number three is about realizing this is not going to get me what I want. There are times in life where anger or being defensive or being, you know, fighting back is a viable and legitimate response to a situation. If you are being attacked by a cougar, you're not going to sit back and say, hmm, I'm feeling very defensive. I'm feeling very angry. No, you're going to claw at that thing as hard as you can and swing your fists at it and beat it off until it runs off into the woods. That is a very viable experience to allow your anger and your defensiveness to take their natural course. However, in conversations with people, generally speaking, engaging in that way does not ultimately get you what you want, which is at least if you're approaching this conversation from a place of wanting general, you know, genuine understanding and synthesis, or even to change the person's mind, these techniques are not going to get you what you get you what you want. Angrily attacking them is not going to get you what you want. Being defensive is not going to get you what you want. I am a husband. I understand this. When I have arguments with my wife, which I do, and we do, that's a normal thing, I have to realize that me getting defensive and me getting angry and me getting frustrated and shoving my thoughts and feelings into her face is not really going to get me what I want, which is to be seen, to be understood. This is a very practical step. You're just saying, this is not going to get me what I want. You're not judging the thing. You're just saying, This is the wrong tool for this lock. This is the wrong key for this lock. That's what the third step of realize is. So you have notice. You're noticing it. This is happening. Number two, accept it. This is normal. Realizing three, this will not get me what I want. Number step number four is to reassess. What will get me what I want? What's going to work in this situation? So now you're holding this thing in your hand. You've realized this is not the right key to this door. Now you're asking, what is going to be the right key to unlock this door? And that is different based off of different situations. There are different tools. There are different techniques. There are different situations that in different ways and directions that you can go in the conversation, which will ultimately get you where you want. I'm going to talk a a little bit about those here in just a minute. So that's number four. What will reassess what's going to get me what I want? What's the right key to this door? And step number five, which is reapproach. This will get me what I want. This is going to get me what I want. This is what I'm going to try to see if it gets me what I want. So what you're doing is you're taking that thing. Ultimately, this whole process is about taking that experience that you're having, objectifying it, saying, is this going to get me what I want? And if it is, then just go for it. But most situations, you're saying, no, this is not going to get me what I'm wanting. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try a different tool. I'm going to try a different method to be able to get where I'm really wanting to go, which is to, you know, like I said, genuinely connect with the person, be seen, see them, change their mind, learn, grow, whatever that is, right? And which leads us to step number five. Oh, sorry, actually, I already talked about step number five, which is this will. You're reapproaching the 
situation with a new tool, with a new technique, a new method. So let's go back over them one more time. Notice, one, accept, two, realize, three, reassess, four, and reapproach, five. That is the five-step process for stepping out of antipathy into empathy. Now I'm going to talk about four tools, four different techniques that you can use in your interviews or in your conversations to be able to go in the reassess and reapproach step. And these are techniques that I myself have used, do use all the time in my conversations and in my just interactions with human beings when I myself am feeling antipathy or hostility towards someone else in a situation. So, and I'm going to really briefly go over these. Maybe I'll step into these. I'll talk a little bit more about these in more in depth in some of the other converse or the other episodes, but I want to talk about them briefly in this episode. So the first tool that you can use is what I like to call the self on the shelf method. This is a method that I use when I'm having conversations with my wife, when I'm having conversations with um, or arguments about my wife, with my wife about things, right? So we're arguing about the best way to spend money or we're arguing about the best, you know, um, way to handle a situation. We're arguing about the place that we want to go eat, right? Whatever that is, there are times when I feel antipathy towards my wife. Right? I feel like, man, I just really want her to see me. I just, she's just, oh, she's driving me nuts, right? And yet, this is someone who I deeply want to connect with and I want to see. So, and the times that I have the best conversations with her when I go through this process, I notice this is happening. I accept it. Okay, this is normal. This is acceptable. I'm frustrated. I'm trying to be seen. This is a very normal human thing to do, right? I realize this is not going to get me where I'm wanting to be with this person. Number four, what will? The tool self on a shelf essentially just means taking that desire that I have in that conversation, which is normally nine times out of 10 to be seen and understood and putting it on the shelf. I take it and I put it on the shelf just for a few minutes. Not that it's bad, not that it's wrong, not that it's, it's, it's unjustified. I just put it on the shelf for a minute. And in that moment, I shift to really genuinely trying to understand her perspective. Just for a minute, I say, I'm going to put this on the shelf and I'm going to listen. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to dive in deep into what she's trying to say and what she's trying to tell me. 10 times out of 10, if I can really understand her and see her, oh, that's why you're feeling this way. Oh, I see. That's really why you're feeling frustrated. Oh, really? Okay. Now I see how this attaches to that and why this is so important for you. Then what happens is she sees, she feels seen. I then take myself off the shelf and bring it back into the conversation. She is in a more open place, a more curious place, a more engaged place. I then present myself to her and she is open to seeing me. This is a powerful tool for conversations that you're trying to connect on for people who you desperately want to connect with. And yet you're feeling so frustrated because what you want is just not being acknowledged. What you want is so important, so important that I want to give you this tool that you can use to put it on the shelf, bring it back into play later on and actually have it be seen. Because what's happening is that person is not in a place to receive what you're trying to give them. They do want that. They want to receive what you're giving them, but they're having the exact same experience you are. For whatever reason, they're not feeling seen, understood, and that's closing them off. If you can just put yourself on that shelf for a minute and come back and then bring it back later on when they're in a more open, resourced, curious place, that's going to actually get you what you want, which is to be seen, understood, valued, taken into consideration. All right, so that's number one. Number two, King's X or timeout. This is really just a great tool for all sorts of conflict management, for conversations, even professional interviews, right? So let's say you're having a really 
deep in-depth interview with someone and like you're just really talking about something that's a really heavy subject right and maybe you're getting a little hostile you're kind of like well what (laughs) you're saying things that I just really don't agree with right but your ultimate goal in this conversation is to understand this person maybe not just to get the most juicy soundbite to make them be angry right because that's not what this is all about right the best goal you're really trying to understand them Sometimes the best thing you can do in a situation is to take a step back, right? You are so engaged. You are so focused. Your blinders are on, right? Sometimes taking a step back is the most important thing you can do to being able to get more perspective on what you're doing. That could mean taking a five-minute break, a 10-minute break in the interview. That could mean moving on to a different question and then returning to that question later on, right? Whatever that is, that King's X, that time out, sometimes that can be a really helpful way for expanding yourself outside of the mindset of, oh, hey, I'm feeling really defensive. I'm feeling really angry and coming back into that conversation. Sometimes, let's say outside of just an interview, a professional interview, again, having a conversation with someone who you really value, taking a step back from the conversation, giving five minutes of silence for the person to think. My wife oftentimes needs space to process. And we've gotten to the point in our relationship where she'll be like, well, I need some space to process this. Can we take a time, some time away from this conversation so I can think, so I can process? Earlier in our relationship, I am the person that when my dukes are up, I want to go for it. You know, I just want to hash it out, talk it out, whatever that is. But I've learned that that will not get me what I want. And so now when she asks me that, I say, okay, I step back and then she reapproaches me, whether that's in five minutes, whether that's in two hours and says, Hey, let's talk about this. I've had time to process a King's X timeout is a very powerful tool for being able to step from antipathy back into empathy because it allows you to de-escalate, it allows them to de-escalate and for you to step outside of that really hyper-focused narrow sort of, you know, reptilian brain which is in fight flight go for it and not able to see the nuances the subtleties and empathize with the other person so number three the third tool or technique you can use is to acknowledge how you're feeling this is something that i have used all the time in conversations with people and you can also use in interviews of if you're genuinely having a conversation with someone and your ultimate goal is to step into curiosity, sometimes you can acknowledge what you're feeling and use it as a way to step into empathy. Now, I'm not saying you should always use this. This will work with some people. It will not work with other people. In some situations, you can say, essentially, This is how what you're saying is making me feel. I'm feeling very defensive. I'm feeling very angry. Can you help me to understand this deeper so that I can move past that emotion? Maybe you're having this conversation with someone who you just fundamentally disagree with politically. What I'm feeling right now is really angry at you. And the reason I'm feeling that way is because what I feel like you're saying is you're saying that, I don't know, I insert whatever you're thinking that they're saying. What that does is it gives them an opportunity to clarify what they're saying. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. You're hearing me from a place that you're not necessarily hearing me right. Or it gives them an opportunity to reaffirm that's exactly what I am saying right? This is a very powerful tool because you're using what you're doing. You're using your emotions as a way to step into curiosity and to step into a deeper understanding of what the other person is saying. Your experience becomes a vessel through which you understand the other person more deeply. And that's why it's so powerful. The ultimate goal of this whole process is to take your experience and use it as a means of understanding the other person in a deeper way. And that's why the acknowledgement technique can be very powerful both in interviews and also 
in conversations to be able to expand that empathy. This is another tool that I use with my wife. This is how I'm hearing you. This is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling really defensive. I'm feeling really frustrated. Can you help me to understand more deeply? I'm feeling really isolated because of that. Can you please help me to like clarify what you're saying? Because maybe I don't think you're actually saying, are you actually saying what I think you're saying? Most of the time, the answer is actually no. This is not what I'm saying. I'm not meaning to make you feel isolated. I'm not saying that thing. This is what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Now I see. I understand. Thank you for clarifying that. So that's your first three tools. The self on the shelf, the king's X, timeout, and acknowledgement. Number four, this is my sort of bonus one that I'm tossing in there. And Honestly, I'm kind of just tossing it in there more for humor's sake than anything else. The tool, the fourth tool is to fly off the handle and argue with the person. And I throw this in there, first of all, because I actually don't think it's really that viable of a tool. But if you are ultimately like in a, in like a, doing an interview, like a television interview, and your goal is to get the juiciest soundbite and to make the person as angry as possible, then yeah, do that. Fly off the handle, argue with them get angry, get defensive, do all that stuff. That's going to make, because what that's going to do is it's going to make them angrier. It's going to make them more frustrated. It's going to make them more defensive. You're not going to get to understand them. You might get a great juicy soundbite interview of that person flying off the handle, but I would ask you ultimately to question whether or not you're actually interviewing that person, or if you're just manipulating them to get the ratings for your show. If that's your ultimate goal, then yeah, go ahead, fly off the handle and argue with them. But that's the only situation that that is going to get you what you want, which is to make them, you know, angrier and more defensive. It's not going to work if you are trying to actually genuinely understand them and have a real human connection with them outside of just disconnection, anger, frustration, and resentment and bitterness. If that's your goal, great, fly off the handle. If not, then try one of the previous three techniques. All right. That is my podcast for today. Um, I've already given you lots of examples. I'm not going to jump into four more examples because I feel like I've given you plenty of examples of what this could look like. Could look like. Maybe I'll use some of those other examples in other podcasts. But just as a recap, we're going to go through the process one more time. You're going to, if in a situation where you're feeling hostile, defensive, you know, just really angry at someone in an interview or a conversation setting, you're first going to notice this is happening. Number two, you're going to accept this is normal. Number three, you're going to realize this is not going to get me what I want. Number four, you're going to reassess what will get me what I want. Number five, you're going to reapproach the conversation. This will get me what I want. This is, or at least this maybe will get me what I want. I'm going to try this technique rather than the experience that I was having. And then the three the techniques that we talked about was the self on the shelf, which is putting yourself on the shelf and trying to deeply understand them for a minute and then bringing it back later. A King's X timeout, taking a step back. And the third one, which is acknowledging, allowing your experience to be a vessel through understanding the other person's experience more deeply. Those are our three tools that we can try in the reassess and the reapproach stages of this process. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I really hope that you can take this episode and the techniques in this episode and use it both in your professional interviewing career, if that's what you do, but also in your one-on-one conversations that you have with people who are in your life who you really deeply do want to understand and you know, connect with, or even change their minds about something. I hope that this is my gift to you, that you can use it and have more intimacy with more people as a result um, in your life and in your professional interviewing career. And we will see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Talk more soon.